Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. In this video, we will follow the Make a Geoprocessing Model tutorial in ArcGIS Pro. You'll learn how to build a model in Model Builder, run it as a geoprocessing tool, and document it for others to use. You can follow the full written instructions for this tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation. Let's get started. I've opened ArcGIS Pro and signed in to my ArcGIS Online account. We'll start by opening the Make a Geoprocessing Model project package. Make sure the portal is set to ArcGIS Online and search for Make a Geoprocessing Model. Open the one with the authoritative badge. The map contains layers representing four invasive grass species and locations where people may come into contact with them. This is a problem because grass seeds can stick to things like clothes, bicycle tires, and car tires, and accidentally be spread to new locations. We'll build a tool that analyzes input locations for proximity to invasive grass. The results can be used to determine whether access to certain areas should be restricted or warning signs should be posted. On the Analysis tab, click Model Builder to open an empty model view. The Model Builder tab appears on the ribbon, and a toolbar can be expanded to work with the most commonly used tools in the tab. From the Contents pane, drag the Commercial Campgrounds layer into the model view. The blue color represents input data. If you right-click the element and click Open, you can change the input to a different layer. On the Model Builder toolbar, click Tools to open the Geoprocessing pane. Search for Pairwise Buffer and drag the tool into the model view. An element is added for the tool itself and for the output element it produces. The gray color indicates the tool isn't ready to run yet. We need to connect the commercial campgrounds as the input features. Open the tool and set the buffer distance to 5 kilometers. The elements are no longer gray, indicating that the model is ready to run. This is a very simple model that will run as a test. Before we do this, right-click the output data variable and click Add to Display to make sure it will be added to the map as a layer once the model is run. On the Model Builder toolbar, click Run. A message informs you that the model completed successfully. We can confirm the 5km buffers around the campgrounds were added successfully in the Marlboro map view. Since this was just a test run, let's remove the Model Builder group layer from the map. In the Catalog pane, expand Databases and expand the Project Geodatabase. Delete the buffer layer and return to the model view. The model elements now have drop shadows indicating the process has been run. You need to validate the model to run it again. This removes the drop shadows. Now let's open the model's properties and give it a more descriptive name, like Summarize Invasive Species. Change the label as well. Model names can't include spaces, but labels can. Save the model. We just ran the model from the model view, but it can also be run as a geoprocessing tool. Open the model and notice that there are currently no parameters that can be set by the user. To add parameters to the tool, we flag inputs in the model view. Close the tool. Right-click the commercial campground's input data variable and set it as a parameter. The letter P indicates that a model element is a parameter. Save the model and reopen the tool to see that the parameter has been added. The tool parameter name, Commercial Campgrounds, comes from the name of the input data variable. That's not a good name because users can pick different kinds of input layers where people might encounter invasive grasses. Let's change the name to Human Contact Locations. Right-click the Pairwise Buffer tool and create a variable from the Distance parameter. We can set the Distance variable as a parameter so the user can input a custom distance into the tool. They may want to use a bigger buffer for campsites that you may wander further away from than a trail where hikers likely won't stray too far. Rename the variable to Buffer Distance. Let's also change the Output Data variable name to Contact Location Buffers. Save the model and reopen the geoprocessing tool to see the changes. The parameter names are updated and users can input a custom buffer distance. Let's remove the default values for the parameters since these don't represent expected user settings. Open the human contact locations data variable, highlight the default value and press the delete key. 
The model turns gray since it is no longer ready to run without an input value. This is expected since the tool is meant to receive user input. Open the buffer distance element and delete the default value of 5. Save the model and reopen the tool. Both parameters are now blank and have red asterisks to indicate that they're required parameters. Deleting the buffer distance default value also resets the distance units from kilometers to unknown. Let's finish the model by adding an input data variable representing invasive species. Previously, we created an input data variable by dragging a layer from the contents pane to the model view. We can also click variable on the model builder toolbar and scroll up to select feature layer. Drag the selected variable to an empty part of the model, rename it invasive species, and add it as a model parameter. On the toolbar, click Tools and search for Summarize Within. The Summarize Within tool will allow us to calculate how much of an invasive grass species is within the specified buffer distance of the given human contact location. For example, we will use this model later to calculate how much nightshade is within 1.5 kilometers of each campsite. Drag the tool into the model. The Summarize Within tool requires two inputs, the features to be summarized, which is invasive species, and the zones that invasive species are analyzed in, which is the contact location buffers. Drag a connector line from the invasive species data variable to the Summarize Within tool and click Input Summary Features. Connect the contact location buffers data variable to the tool as input polygons. Add the output feature class as a parameter. This will let you change the name and location of the output feature class. Open the output feature class and delete the default path. Right-click the Summarize Within tool and create a variable for the shape unit. Rename the shape unit value variable to area unit of measure. This setting allows you to choose the measurement units of the area covered by invasive grass. Open the variable and set the default measurement to hectares. Then set the variable as a model parameter. On the ribbon on the Model Builder tab, click Auto Layout. Save the model and open the Summarize Invasive Species tool. The tool is ready to use, but let's add some properties before we run it. Click Properties and click the Parameters tab. Let's move the Area Unit of Measure parameter up a row so that the Output Feature class is the last parameter. The last column allows you to assign symbology to model datasets using a layer file storing symbology. For the output feature class parameter, browse in the symbology column to find the layer file in the common data user data folder. This is going to draw the buffer zones with a black outline and a hollow fill so that it will be easy to see the amount of grass in each zone. Close the tool properties dialog box and save the model. We'll create a new geodatabase to save our tool outputs in. That way the outputs won't get mixed up with the input data in our project geodatabase. In the catalog pane, right-click the databases container and create a new file geodatabase. Set the name as model output and click save. Right-click the model output geodatabase and make it the default so that the geoprocessing outputs go to this geodatabase automatically. Open the Summarize Invasive Species tool and close the model view. Turn off the Commercial Campgrounds and Nacella Tussock range layers and turn on the Campsites and White Edge Nightshade range layers. In the Summarize Invasive Species tool, set the human contact locations to campsites, the buffer distance to 1.5 kilometers, the invasive species to White Edge Nightshade range, and the output feature class to Nightshade near campsites. Run the tool and zoom in on the map to see the buffers. Open the attribute table for the Nightshade Near Campsites layer and sort the Summarized Area in Hectares field by descending values. We can see that only one of the campsites has any white edged nightshade within a 1.5 km radius. The Summarized Area value is 7.35 hectares. Lastly, let's add some metadata to help explain the tool's purpose and usage. On the tool, click Help to open the tool help. A browser tab opens showing the help. Currently, there is no information. In the catalog pane, right-click the tool and click Edit Metadata. Add tags, a summary, and usage notes to explain the tool's purpose. In the syntax section, add information in the dialog explanation boxes to explain each parameter. 
On the Metadata tab, click Save. Open the tool and hover over Help to see the tool summary. Hover over the information icon next to Tool Parameters to see the explanations. For more detailed steps, follow the full written tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation, linked in the description for this video.